Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about shoes and more specifically the top 10 pairs of shoes that I've got in my wardrobe. I did a video recently where I kind of talked through, uh, I suppose the 33 items that I would hang on to if I were to start my wardrobe from scratch. I'm going to leave that linked up here in case you're curious, but I did get a few requests to kind of expand that into accessories and I'd actually been thinking about doing this video anyway because I didn't really want to do a traditional shoe collection this year. If you know me, you'll know how much I love shoes and I knew I'd end up sitting there talking for probably 40 minutes. So I figured instead I'd do a more condensed version and give you a bit of a review and also show you how the shoes fit and also why they are such an integral part of my own shoe collection. Um, I have done another video on the shoes that I recommend every woman have in their closet. It is a little bit more expansive. It's not uh, quite as minimal as some other options, you know, you can give or take depending on your personal style. But again, that's another one. I will have that up in the cards and linked in the description box below. Before I dive into it, the other thing I want to mention is I think this video is going to go up around Black Friday. So if you are planning on shopping the sales, shop smart, don't buy anything that you can't afford and only buy what you need. I am going to do a roundup of all of the sales and things. I will have codes linked in the description box if they're out as well as a blog post and a link to that blog post, which I will update as sales kind of go on. But for me, I always use it as a great opportunity to uh, invest in things that maybe are a little bit out of my budget otherwise, and also to pick up Christmas presents because I can't believe it, we're so close to Christmas. So with all that being said, let's dive into it with the first pair of shoes. And if you know me well, and you've watched so many of my videos, you can probably guess which pair I'm going to start off with. And actually let me know in the comments below if you got this right. It is my Vanelli two-toned pumps. I've actually got these in two colors and I can't really say I can pick a favorite. I think these are probably the ones that I've gotten the most love this year because I tend to wear a lot of darker colors and these work so well with those outfits. They are such a fantastic dupe for the Chanel two-tone pumps, fraction of the price, and these are very well made. I've had these ones here I want to say I've had for 18 to 24 months. My beige pair, I've had even longer. So I've had these about six months longer than the gray pair. These ones are leather with a fabric toe cap. These ones are a felted wool with a suede toe cap. Uh, but yeah, I just, I love the design. I really like an almond toe. I think it's very flattering. And if you don't like pointed toe shoes, these are a really great way to go in terms of finding something that is going to still be elongating. Uh, Cause I find round toes can sort of make your legs look a little bit shorter. These are incredibly comfortable and I do find that they fit true to size. I have wide feet and I am a US 9 or a European 40 and I got these in my usual size of US 9. I thought I'd follow it up with a pair of sandals because it's essentially summer here in Sydney at the moment and my favorite sandals are my must-have pair in my own wardrobe are uh, these ones from Sportscraft. I've had these for, this is coming on to the third summer that I've had them now and they have held up really well. I just love the style of them. I think that they're very, very flattering. New shoes in general tend to be leg lengthening. So if you're petite, I would recommend looking for sandals that are nude or more of a tan color over black if you want to make your legs appear a little bit longer. But for me, the fact that these do not have a strap around the ankle is really what won me over. I love the little addition of the python detailing across the toe. It's just something a little bit different. I haven't really seen many other shoes like this. And the fact that they also have the nude colored panel around the back of the foot, which is in a nude back leather. Uh, yeah, they've held up really well. They do have some scuff marks on the heel, but you can use one of those leather erasers to get rid of those marks. Unfortunately, because these are so old and they aren't, I don't think they're one of Sportscraft's classic styles. Don't think you can get these anymore, but I will try and find some similar alternatives. But they have just been, honestly, one of my favorite sandals. They're so comfortable, easy to walk miles in, and they go with absolutely everything because they are a neutral color. So snakeskin is a good print option if you want a print that is going to be really versatile and really match a lot of what you have in your closet, regardless of whether you love color or if you love neutrals like me. 
Since moving to Sydney, I have done so much more walking than I ever did when I lived in Wellington, and so flat shoes have definitely become my best friend. I'm not sure if it's also an age thing because I prefer lower heels over high ones. It's got nothing to do with me being pregnant, it's just been the way that my shoe preferences have gone over the last few years. And I wanted to talk about a really great pair of shoes which I sort of use as an everyday runaround pair. They're my Sam Edelman loafers. Again, these are a really great dupe for the Gucci Jordan loafers, I think they're called, or the Brixton loafers. These ones don't actually have a step down, although it looks like you probably could. Um, it doesn't really work very well, I have tried. <laughs> I've had these for, gosh, I want to say close to two years now, and they do look a little bit worn, but it's nothing a little bit of shoe polish can't fix. These are so comfortable. I did find that they fit a little bit tight across my foot initially when I first got them. Uh, I took these in a US 9, uh, which is my regular size, and again, these fit me perfectly, but they were a bit tight because I do have wider feet. That has completely stretched out now. Probably took 10 to 15 wears for that to go away. I want to mention it just in case you have been eyeing these up and you also have wide feet. But aside from that, they are so comfortable. I haven't gotten a single blister from them. And they're just a really great classic shoe option. And I think they look a lot more expensive than they actually are. And one thing you'll probably realize is that I am all for designer shoe dupes, things that feel a bit inspired by the designer option, but aren't going to hit your bank balance as hard. So uh, a really great one, especially if you just like a good classic flat loafer. Now I thought I mentioned sneakers and I feel like sneakers are a great pair of shoes to have in your closet for something that is really comfortable, casual, practical, goes with a lot of outfits. I really love how sneakers look with dresses actually. Um, and I've got two pairs I want to talk about. So probably the pair that I would say if I had to pick one would be the ones that I would keep. Uh, my Veja sneakers. So these are produced by a French company and they are very kind of ethical and sustainable. I will link their website down below where you can learn a lot more about their practices. And actually Claire Press, who's Vogue sustainability editor, did a interview with the founders or the founder of the company and that was incredibly fascinating to hear them talk about how they decided to start the company and why uh, sourcing materials uh, that are sustainable is really important to them. So I will leave that in the description box below as well in case you'd like to have a listen it's a must listen if you don't listen to wardrobe crisis you need to it is a fantastic podcast i learn so much from it every week <laughs> but these are the s last sneakers and i went for them in just the classic white with the beige suede tab at the heel and one thing you may notice is that i have gotten a little bit of color transfer here on the left shoe which i think was from a darker pair of jeans and I didn't realize it's a little bit annoying that it's not on both so it's not symmetrical but one thing to keep in mind if you are buying their shoes and they do have the suede detail at the heel is that you, you need to be careful if you're wearing any jeans or anything that's darker that may uh, run or the dye may run uh, but yeah I get a lot of questions about these shoes and how they fit one thing I will say that's frustrating about Veja is that they only do full sizes so if you're half size you need to size up but even then they might be too big you could probably put insoles on in them but probably not the best solution so I would recommend potentially looking for another brand that does a similar style I mean there's so many out there these days I went for a European 40 so my usual size US 9 UK 7 these fit me perfectly I haven't had any issues the one thing I will say though is that the tongue on them was so stiff when I first bought them it would rub into the very base of my leg you know sort of where your uh, calf meets your ankle and I did get blisters and sores from it the first few times that I wore them I would say probably the seventh time that I wore them I didn't have any pain at all but it is still stiff and it will dig in if I tie the laces too tightly so I do just want to flag that because uh, it can be a little frustrating when you spend a lot of money on shoes only to find that they are uncomfortable otherwise they are perfect like these are so great for walking around in and I love the lower profile of them the fact that they are relatively slim and they just are really flattering on the foot they don't make my feet look huge and they are really perfect for pairing with little sundresses now I did want to just talk about another pair of sneakers quickly because these ones I wear if I'm going to be taking the dog for a walk 
or if I just want something really comfortable because they're orthopedic, they're my Frankie 4 sneakers. I think these ones are called the Mim and they're in a patent leather and a grey. These look really great with white and faded black, that sort of thing. Uh, they're more of a yellow based grey, but they are so, so comfortable. They also have support in the insole and the shoes actually come with additional insoles that you can pop in there depending on whether you have a wide or a narrow foot, which I love. And these have held up really well. You can kind of see there's a little bit of creasing with the patent uh, that's sort of natural with the sneaker. In terms of the sizing for these ones, I feel like I've got them in a nine and a half, uh, which I've sized up um, just because I do find that their nines run a little bit narrow. Yeah, I've got them in the nine and a half. So I do have a little bit of extra space with these ones, but I find that it's kind of nice to have, especially if you want to wear some chunkier socks or something like that with them. Okay, so let's talk a recent shoe edition and one which I have said in a previous video that I thought was a little bit silly because I bought them after finding out I was pregnant and if you don't know this, your feet can actually expand or grow an entire size when you're pregnant because it's got to do with the ligaments relaxing, that sort of thing. So orthopedic shoes I think are the way to go uh, to make sure that your arch doesn't drop. But I decided to finally invest in a pair of by far Tanya Meals. I had been loving this nude color and I just thought that these would be a really beautiful addition to my spring summer wardrobe. For me it was the combination of it being a relatively classic style with modern details. So it's a little bit vintage but modern at the same time. So there's a square toe and then the architectural block heel which is very very comfortable to walk in. I will say that sometimes I do find that the shoe slips a little bit when I'm walking but I've had a chance to wear these quite a bit now and they're absolutely fine. Um, probably because they are patent and you can get them in leather. I do sometimes find I get a little bit of rubbing on my feet. Nothing major but I wouldn't wear these from you know 9 in the morning till after 9pm at night kind of thing. So <laughs> they're more of a wear them for maybe 5 hours tops before I want to change into something else. But I love the way that these look. They are leg lengthening because they are nude uh, and they're just a really beautiful shoe. I went for a European 40 and I find that they fit true to size. I have found some more affordable dupes. Found one from Seed Heritage, which is an Australian brand. I do think that they ship internationally though. And also the other brand is Tony Bianco, another Australian brand too. The Tony Bianco ones I think are suede, so a little bit more high maintenance, but you still get that same look for less. Now, I feel like I've insinuated this already, but when it comes to kind of shoes, I really do like something that's got more of a pointed toe overall, just because it does have that leg lengthening effect. I think it's really elegant, very chic, and very put together. And it is a classic. I mean, pointed toe shoes have been around for forever, it feels like. And when it comes to heels, there is one shoe that I find is probably my favorite, my favorite silhouette. I love everything about them. And it is the Everlane Editor Pumps. I've got them in two colors. So I've got the navy, and then I also have this really stunning camel color, which unfortunately is really old. This is from when they first launched them, and they don't sell this color anymore. They've got more uh, muted or tumnal wintry colors at the moment. But I just find these shoes really comfortable. They have nice cushioning in the insole, which is great. And the square cut across the vamp, I think, is really different. It's really interesting. They don't really show any toe cleavage. They also have this little tab at the back, which is a nice little detail. And the heel is not too high. It's very easy to walk around in these. Everlane shoe sizing is a little bit of a funny one. I get lots of questions about it. So as I mentioned, I'm typically a US 9 or a European 40. And these ones here I have in the US 9.5. I find across the board their shoes fit half a size small. So I always go up half a size from other brands. They do have a size chart on their website, which is worth referring to if you aren't sure. You can always email their customer service as well, which I would highly recommend doing if you want a little bit more information. The quality of these shoes is just stunning. I would really love to get them in the black because I just feel like that's something I'm missing. I've got a super high pair of pointed toe uh, black heels from Isabel Morant, which I've had for, I want to say six or seven years now, a really long time, and they've held up really well, but they've got a 10 centimeter heel, and I very seldom have an occasion to wear them now. So while I'm hanging on to them because they're a classic, I just don't really wear them, and something like this would be a lot more practical for me for day to day. One thing you're probably going to notice about most of these shoes is that the majority of them aren't high-end designer and the reason for that being is that I think you can get really great, well-made, 
high quality shoes for a fraction of the price I generally would say around the 200 Australian dollar mark is sort of what you're looking to pay for a shoe that is constructed well and will last you years but I do still love my designer shoes it's kind of I would say it was my gateway entry into luxury goods and sort of investing in my wardrobe when I was a lot younger um, and this next pair of shoes is a designer pair so these ones are from Dior and they are the Jadior Slingback Flats I bought these pre-loved, I found them on eBay, I got them half price and I was so so chuffed with my find because they were in excellent condition and they were the exact style that I was after. So these have a beautiful kind of, I would say it's almost like a textured fabric on the actual I guess body of the shoe and then they have this Jadior printed ribbon and I just find these really fun. Like. I love a pointed toe flat shoe. Again, I just think they're really leg lengthening. How many times can I say that in this video? But I do have a couple of niggly complaints about them. So because the actual ribbon section is white or ivory, it does get dirty. So mine has yellowed a little bit, which is probably just a result of wearing them and walking around. I haven't tried cleaning them. I'm sure I could probably use some baby wipes or something like that, which might help to remove some of that discoloration. But I did want to flag that in case you're thinking about buying these. The ones with the black ribbon is probably going to be a little bit more practical. You can get loads of shoes like this that are much more affordable. Linaire Paolo do a very similar style. I will link those down in the description box. But ultimately, I think these are really beautiful. I'm glad I have them in my collection. I have them in a European 40. I do think this particular style runs half a size large. Well, you can go with your, your usual size or you can go with half a size smaller. I've tried them on in the 39 and a half and they were much more snug around the heel. They will give you a little bit of blistering as well the first few times that you wear them just as the band sort of softens. But yeah, I think these are really fun. The ribbon is, I think, the detail that makes them really, really special. Okay, I think I'm on to shoe number eight and that is a really great pair of winter boots. The shoes I want to talk about are more of a newer pair to my wardrobe, but the reason why I wanted to mention these over any of the other styles I have is because they they tick all the boxes for me style-wise, and I do feel like my boot tastes have changed. So I've gone from being someone who really likes an ankle boot, one that cuts off either just under the ankle or halfway up the ankle, to someone who wants a boot with a very narrow profile, preferably something that's not necessarily too pointy, maybe more in between an arm and toe and a pointed toe, but also that has a very slim profile up the leg. So that comes up a little bit up the leg because I just think that's really flattering. And I also find it's really good for when you want to layer up in the winter time and keep your legs warm, especially if you live in a colder climate. So the boots I wanted to mention are these ones here from Everlane. These are the Western boots. These were gifted to me as part of my ongoing partnership that I do with them. And I adore these. These are, I feel like, the best sort of version of a Western style booty that doesn't feel too literal. Um, they've got Western inspired details, but it doesn't feel like I'm wearing a costume. They have a slightly squared off toe, so you can kind of see it's more of an arm, pointed arm and toe, but then the actual leather which runs underneath is squared off. They have the elastic panel on the side which makes them really easy to pull on and off and they have a really low Cuban block heel which is very comfortable to walk in. One thing to note about these shoes is that I do feel like they run small. Mine are definitely snug. I got my usual size as a U US 9.5 and, and I wish I got in the US 10. So particularly if you have wide feet or if, you, if you've been looking at these and you want to wear them with really thick socks, make sure you size up. I kind of make sure to wear my thickest socks that I can squeeze into these when I've worn them to stretch them out. The leather is really high quality and it's super thick and really hard. So these are going to keep your feet very nice and warm in the winter months just because they are so sturdy and they're the kind of thing that are really classic despite being more of a western boot they are classic and something I see myself wearing for years and years. Another classic shoe is just a great pair of strappy sandals. I've got these ones here from Marj which I bought off the real real I want to say two or three years ago now. I had them in Dallas and I think that was maybe that was in 2017. Uh, yeah, I love the detail on them. They've got this sort of braided design around the actual strap 
and they are a really nice height. These are actually pretty easy to walk in despite their height. I mean, the one thing I will say is that I do find that these straps sort of wiggle around. And so for me, and I got these in my usual size, which is a European 40, and they do fit true to size. So for me, I would say my ideal sort of style is something like these Vince Camuto ones, which you really have to mind the fact that the heels are destroyed. I wore these out uh, for, for drinks and for dinner and things, and I think I fell in a pothole and I scratched up the back. <laughs> so I need to get them repaired. They're sort of been sitting there for me to take to the cobbler. But this sort of style where the actual strap is attached at the back of the shoe, I think is ideal. And these are actually really good heel height too. If you like this particular style, but you don't want something that is too high, highly recommend these ones. And actually I really like the plain black leather ones. I think they're beautiful, just a classic. These ones come in loads of colors too. And Again, I got them in a 40 or a 9, so they run true to size as well. The final pair of shoes that I wanted to mention as part of this video is a quirky pair of flats. Now, I think when you are wearing such basic, very classic, sort of minimal outfits, your accessories are where you can really make your outfit shine. And for me, one of the biggest ways that I really started doing that when I was sort of, I guess, more in my early 20s and I just carried it on is with fancy flats. And my favorite, favorite shoes, which I've owned two pairs of, can you guess which ones these are? <laughs> my Charlotte Olympia Kitty Flats. These are in the black velvet and you would think that they're not super um, practical. However, I've worn these so much I only wish I had a photo of my old pair because they were so destroyed. I had ripped them at the side because I've got a bunion on my left foot and they had stretched, they'd stretched the shoe out completely. So I'd had to get them repaired. I'd had them resold probably three times. They were so worn, so well loved. And Luke ended up buying me a second pair for Christmas. I think these ones he got me about three years ago. And I just find Charlotte Olympia shoes are really well made. They are very comfortable. They do fit true to size. I've got these in a European 40 and they fit me perfectly. And the thing I love about her shoes is the attention to detail and also the quality craftsmanship. So a lot of her flats, I would say this is kind of a signature detail of hers, have this, have this beautiful little gold heel. And you will know if you've watched a lot of my other videos, I have some pointed toe pumps from her and they have the same gold heel, which is just really lovely. It kind of just pops at your ankles kind of thing. Um, but I just think these are such a sweet shoe. Definitely not one I'm tired of wearing. And they go with everything from dresses and shorts to they also look great with skirts and jeans as well. So kind of thing that I will wear all year round, though probably not when it's 40 degrees in Sydney. So that is my final pair that I wanted to mention. And I mean, I know this particular style isn't really trendy anymore, but one, one thing I think that's really important when you are investing in designer items is that you think more about how it's going to work for you, your lifestyle, and your personal style. So while classics are great, and I 100% think that they are perfect to invest in because they will never date, when it's something special like this that you know you'll wear all the time, then I think it is worth the splurge if it's going to give you lots of joy. So there you have it. That is 10 pairs of shoes that I feel like I can't live without. I hope you enjoyed this video. Love to know what your favorite pair of shoes are in your wardrobe. And if there's anything you think I'm missing or any brands that you would recommend me to look at after the pregnancy when I know what size my feet are going to be. As I mentioned, I will be sure to leave as much information as I can down in the description box, not only about my shoes, but also about any of those Black Friday sales that are running in case you are planning on buying something this year. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.